Um, the question is, why have the playoff games in college football been so prone to blowouts? Arkansas, Ole Miss, Mississippi State played LSU closer than Oklahoma, yet Oklahoma would have probably smoked those teams. Does the month of prep allow a better team to exploit weaknesses easier, or is the talent gap between the top one and two teams and three and four that big? Is it coaching, or is it something else? It's Redskins, by the way. Red, oh, he's with the Redskins. Okay. He went He went with... Uh, and, and Michael um, just jumped in immediately and said that. So, Redskins. Yeah. Ron Rivera. He went with Ron Rivera. That's, right. Man, that's a really good defensive coaching staff right there, baby. It's Woo. it's not bad. It's not bad. So, All right. college football playoff blowouts. Blowouts. It happens regularly. Uh, go ahead and talk, and I will pull up the uh, what, what the playoff think, results have been. I think this quest, this answer is a lot simpler than it seems, which is simply you're playing a great team, and it's every eye in the world is watching. It's totally okay to keep your foot on the gas pedal the entire game. You're never pulling anybody. You're never benching anybody. Um, LSU, you, you brought up LSU against Arkansas and 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 an Ole Miss and whatever. At no point in time was that game out of control. They were up three, four scores the entire game. And so they started laxing off defense, subbing a lot of guys in, getting younger guys reps. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, offense, they pretty much kept all the guys in there and kept running and gunning. But but they just they just kind of backed off defensively. Don't let anybody get hurt. Don't do anything crazy. Yeah. They're not within three scores, so why do we care? And it became this thing. I never under, I never thought for the life of me that it would be the thing that tried people tried to see as a knock that LSU dropped 66 on Vanderbilt or something like that. And people were like, You you barely beat them. They 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 scored 30 points against you. And I was like, but we beat the hell out of them. Yeah, beat about four touchdowns. How come we don't knock? Georgia, Georgia beat them by the exact same amount we did, but Georgia only allowed them to score like 14 points. So I'm thinking, okay, that means Georgia only scored 28 points. So, yeah. so how come we don't knock Georgia's offense for being so bad when we're going to criticize LSU's defense for being so bad? At the end of the day, you beat the hell out of somebody. Does it really matter how you got there? And at what point in time did college football become a thing where beating somebody about 21 or 28 points? is frowned upon and looked at like you didn't do anything special. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you on that. Matt jumped in. He said kids strain their cerebellum. It can be part of the preparation mentally. You get out there having fun in a new place, and you lose focus. I, but that still doesn't answer the question of why there are so many blowouts in the college football playoff. Because uh, when you get to the playoffs, you're not pulling those guys. You're not ever letting off the gas. That right. That defense but, is on lock constantly. But what I'm and saying. I promise you, if, if you were – if you had to beat the teams as bad as you could beat them without question, the Ole Miss game would have looked different. The oh, Arkansas yeah. game would have looked different. They absolutely would have found a way to stop those teams because in the second half against two of the best offenses in the world last year, they got nothing. They scored nothing. Now, Michael asked uh, an interesting question. He said, do you think the amount of time before they play hurts or helps college kids? I think, I think it actually, like some of them it helps. Like, I think, I think it helps. It, like, it hurts, obviously, with reps and whatnot. Like, if you've got a gimmicky offense or whatever, I think that can hurt because, you know, if, if you're not getting the reps in, uh, if you're not playing at game speed. If you speed, got a gimmicky offense, it's easy to practice for because you have a month to prepare Exactly. For it. it has uh, nothing to do with the kids not being able to practice and rep it. It's the, it's the other team can shut it down. Let me let me give you the results. Uh, just going back through all of this, okay? And, and yeah. we're just talking about semifinal games right now. We're not talking about the title game. Uh, semifinal game 2015, Oregon 59, Florida State 20. Uh, and then you had Ohio State 42, Alabama 35. Now that was, you know, that was a good game. Uh, Alabama 38, Michigan State nothing the next year. Clemson 37, Oklahoma 17. That was a three touchdown beatdown. Alabama 24, Washington 7. It really wasn't that close. Clemson 31, Ohio State nothing. Um, the next one. Georgia 54, Oklahoma 48, that was fantastic. And then Alabama 24, Clemson 6, that was uh, that was also, you know, a fairly even game other than Alabama scored uh, a couple of defensive touchdowns. Um, after that, you've got Clemson 30, Notre Dame 3, Alabama 45, Oklahoma 34. Now, that one was 28 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. It wasn't even close. 
Uh, the next year, this this past year, Clemson 29, Ohio State 23, LSU 63, Oklahoma 28. So you've got one, two, three, four, da, 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 five, that 63 six. to 28 game. That was a 28 to nothing game. Yeah, that's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. Um, I mean, you you've got 75 percent of the semifinal games mm-hmm. have been three touchdown or more blowouts, basically. Um, and then Michael said Oklahoma didn't deserve to be there. That's where I'm going to come in here and say the problem is. I don't think that we are getting the best four teams. I think we're getting the four teams that, quote, deserve to be there. But I don't think that Oklahoma was one of the best four teams last year or or the year before that. Or, you know, like, I, I don't, but I don't know of an easier way to do it. Well, you like can't. I, you can't. I mean, without question, anybody in their right mind would tell you that Georgia was a better football team than, than Oklahoma. Auburn yeah. was probably a better football team than Oklahoma last year. You, you can't let four SEC teams in. You, know, you just got to do it. And that, that's the thing. Sense. I think that's what would make, like, a 16-team playoff better. Because you would Wisconsin obviously Wisconsin and Penn State were probably better than Oklahoma. I would have liked to have seen yes. that game, by the way. Yeah, agreed. Like, like I don't know that for a fact, but I know enough to question the toughness and completeness of Oklahoma. The you know? the best team that Oklahoma played all of last season was Baylor. Yep. And I don't think Baylor talent wise. Oh, stacked up close. against even the top not, ten. Not close. Like the, the fact that Baylor was in both those games and dominating one of those games and, and it took an absolute miracle for Oklahoma to come back and win is is kind of is very telling of where Oklahoma was last year. And and some people will say this is the reason we don't need to expand the playoffs is because we already I don't know that we're not getting the best four teams in as much as the talent gap every year between the top two, usually teams and the top three teams, top 14. At some point in time, we have a massive drop off in talent. That Ohio state Clemson last year was about as evenly talented as you could possibly get. It was, I'm very proud of my right tigers. There. I think we would have beat the hell out of Ohio state. Yeah. L- like I think LSU would have beaten everybody Clemson. last year. But I definitely think the three teams last year were the three best teams that I've seen in the college football playoffs since we've started the playoffs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would like to see that Clemson team last year and that Ohio State team last year play the rest of the other championship teams. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Michael said the four best should be there regardless of conference. Matt said Oklahoma got people on board early with Hertz's video game numbers. That got people talking. Look, Oklahoma is going to oh, put look up... look at who they played in those video game numbers. Exactly, though. but they, no, that's I'm what I'm saying. Kidding. They're going to put up video game numbers every single year because their schedule is dog shit every year. But that's year. not even Big 12. Hang on, that was before they got into Big 12 play. That was non-conference. They pulled in the softest teams that they could play and say, let's beat the hell out of these guys. But even in oh, the Big 12... let's go 12. find a Pac-12 team. Where's, where's UCLA? Let's go beat the shit out of a team that hasn't had a defensive star in 20 years. <laughs> Come on, let's go. This yeah. is why I have a problem with college football, by the way. And and this yet and yet Oklahoma got beat at Kansas State last year. Yeah. Like you got you got 130 teams, which means you've got 50 feet of crap somewhere in here everywhere you look. Yes. All right. Every week we've got 130 teams and we might have we might get three good football games to watch every Saturday. Yeah. That's my problem with college football. Yeah. I mean, it's insane. Uh, oh, Matt jumped in. Yeah, people talked about Hertz numbers and averages, uh, but they'd never mentioned that they beat the University of Minnesota, or the University of Montana school for blind women. Like, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much what it was. Like uh, they they played Houston. Houston had zero defense last year, and and he put up 500 yards passing and 100 whatever it was. You know, it was crazy numbers. Uh, I think that the issue is that we are not getting the best four teams every year, and everybody wants to talk about it, but it, it's it, they say it's the four most deserving. Because, you know, they typically want uh, conference champions in there. They want, you know, obviously you deserve a seat at the table if you win your championship, if you win your conference. I don't think that you necessarily deserve a seat at the table if you win your conference. I think it should be the best four teams. 
but how are you going to determine that? That's you know, the problem. That, that's when the, nobody plays anywhere close to an equal schedule, you can't determine that. Right, which is you why just, just a 16 team playoff. Uh, dude, I was, you remember initially I was the one saying, nope, ah, it know. needs to be four. I know. And then yep. I was saying, ah, maybe if we do six, like six would be fine, yep. but no conference champions. And, and I then was the I one thought, that won at 16. And then I thought eight, you know, eight would be good because then you got two wild cards, but maybe two wild cards is not enough. No. Because I think there were multiple top 10 teams that would have beaten Oklahoma last year. Yep. Like, it, And here's the thing. People always say, but really, what are their chances of winning the championship? When you have a tournament that big, you're not necessarily just trying to find the number one spot. Yeah. We're trying to find who's going to finish fifth. What if we had the top three teams, four teams, all finish SEC teams. Or be a great opportunity for the Big Ten to step up and say, maybe those guys from the South really aren't that great. And what if Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan, and uh, Wisconsin all finished, you know, in the top seven of the five, you know, schools or whatever, five of the seven schools. Like, you would get all those schools in if you get 16. Y'all, yeah. You're all coming. Yeah. No, you're right. Um Michael said, if Oklahoma, Texas, or any other Power 5 team want to complain, play Texas and m schedule from last year and make it through that. Yep. Yeah. Their, their schedule last year was ridiculous. Now, their schedule this coming season, like if, if, if any team wanted to, uh, if any team was going to play a schedule or wanted to make sure that the 2020 season happened, it would be Texas A&M. Yep. They've got 10 games that they should be favored by more than a touchdown in for for the beginning of the season, and then they've got Alabama and LSU to close. They're going to have to beat Alabama, LSU, and Auburn. Yes. That's it. That's the list. That's it. That's the whole list. And so, That's it. I, uh, those three games, they're going to Atlanta, and I think they're going to play. If we had a normal season, I've, I told you this before, I was ready to bet them to win the national title, to make the playoffs, to win the SEC. I have all these bets in my head. I know I'm going to get great odds because people are going to load up on LSU, Alabama, and Auburn like they do every year. People are going to load up on Georgia on the SEC every year. And and I'm telling you, I think Jimbo Fisher is doing something special there. I yeah. think he's building something there. He's getting it to where he wants it to be. And 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 the schedule works out great. Hey, babe. Let, hey, let him just run in here. Well, he is fired up. Do you hear him? Yeah. Yeah. Here, hey, just just let him run in here. It's fine. Oh, it's not. The, she said it's not that. Oh, he pissed off. Oh, oh, he's mad about uh, he's mad about something else. Well, well he, he is. Off. He woke up from his nap and he is feisty. Who, Lord? Uh, Jim John said, if Jimbo Fisher doesn't win ten games this year, I will question his comp- uh, competency. But uh, he will. That's the thing. He's going to. Yeah. I th- I mean, depending on whether or not everything goes well, the way it's yeah, supposed we, to, we obviously, yeah. Uh, Michael yeah. said, just like Notre Dame thing, it's about money and ratings. That's the most frustrating part of college football. Uh, and then Michael said, I don't trust Mond. Uh, I like but here's the thing. Mond. I don't know that Mond's going to be his quarterback all year. If Mond doesn't cut it, do you think Jimbo doesn't, won't cut that fool? He will pull him and put somebody else in? Yeah. yeah. I, for I, three I, years, I promise you he's got another quarterback on the roster. Yeah. I assure you of that. No, I think I think you're exactly right. It's not right. a less mile situation, okay? No, you're uh, you're 100 percent right on that. Uh, we have gone 33 minutes, and my fence guy is uh, is pulling up here in just a minute, so I'm gonna have to run. We uh we are going well, to have let's, to let's just let's just let's just close it. Let's let's close it. We'll talk about the first to win the national title uh, from our our group of yeah. teams uh, here in the next little bit. Here, you want to come here? You want to close out with me? Here, come here. Nope. He's all pissed yeah, he's off. A, he's a, don't no. put him on camera while he's pissed off. I don't know what he's. Well, he's just. Run, just close the damn he's show. He's just running about like I don't know what's going on with him, man. He is fired up. Bye, guys. Thank y'all. <laughs> all right, go to winningcureseverything dot com. We appreciate y'all. Subscribe to the show. Share the show out with your buddies. Uh, Bobby James said thanks, y'all. Thank you. Thank you for everybody that jumped into the chat. We appreciate you guys. You have been wonderful. Of course, I'm gonna go tend to the boy and uh, and then tend to the fence. Uh, and I'll explain how all that goes tomorrow. So I will. Uh, I'll let you go, Chris. It's been a lot of fun. We'll uh, we'll do this again tomorrow. Sound good?
Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.